Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Clean Water Conversations, formerly named the Clean Water Lecture Series. My name is Rachel McKimmy, and I'm an AmeriCorps member serving at the Department of Environmental Conservation. The Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation's Clean Water Initiative Program, CWIP, or QUIP, has just released its 2022 performance report, which, which summarizes efforts of state government along with federal and local partners to improve water quality across Vermont from state fiscal year 2016 to 2022. In this virtual talk, CWIP's TMDL tracking and accounting coordinator, Claire Madden, will provide an overview of Vermont's clean water progress. Our next talk will be taking place on Thursday, March 9th at 12 p.m. Uh, you can join us to learn about the Abenaki relationship to water and why clean water is important to traditional life ways. Um, we'll be having a guest speaker for that from who is the uh, director of the Abenaki Life Association, Vera Sheehan. She's wonderful. Um, you can keep a lookout for more information on how to attend this event by signing up for our clean water newsletter um, to keep up to date on other events happening in the clean water world. I will post a link in the chat for that later. This lecture will feature a 30 minute presentation with questions and answers at the end. Uh, you can ask questions by using the chat at any time during the presentation. Um, we would like to respect everyone's time and end before 1 p.m. Um, so we will start by asking questions from the chat and then if time allows, uh, let people unmute and ask questions out loud. If you would like to verbally ask a question, you can use the raise hand function and we can call on you. At that time, you can unmute and speak. This lecture is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel after the event. I'll also share a link for that as well. All right, and now I will pass it over to Claire. Thanks, Rachel. Getting my screen situated here. Thanks for joining us today. As Rachel said, my name is Claire Madden and I'm the tracking and accounting coordinator for the Clean Water Initiative Program at the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation. I'm excited to be here today to share some of the results from the Vermont Clean Water Initiative 2022 performance report, which details the state of Vermont's efforts and progress towards achieving our clean water goals. During today's presentation, I'll cover a bit of background on water quality in Vermont, describe what we mean by clean water projects, briefly explain, explain our reporting obligations, and then dive into the highlights of clean water investments, outputs, and outcomes. We'll wrap up with a quick tour of the Clean Water Interactive Dashboard where you all can explore and interact with the data. Vermont prioritizes protection and restoration of water quality for many reasons. We rely on clean water for habitat and ecosystem preservation as a source of drinking water for many communities throughout the state, for aesthetic and quality of life values, and to support recreation and tourism, which contribute to the state's economy. For the most part, we are really fortunate to be able to enjoy and benefit from clean and healthy lakes, rivers, and streams throughout the state. However, sometimes water bodies in the state are not as pristine as we might hope. Water quality impacts in Vermont are often the result of excess sediment and nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen within the ecosystem. An overabundance of sediment and nutrients in our waterways can lead to undesirable water quality impacts. One example being cyanobacteria or blue-green algae blooms which can have an impact on wildlife, plant communities, public health, and recreation opportunities. Vermont has clean water restoration plans called Total Maximum Daily Loads, or TMDLs, that outline the amount of a pollutant a water body can receive while still meeting the state's water quality standards. The map on the screen shows the spatial coverage of the state's large-scale TMDLs. The Lake Champlain and Lake Memphremagog basins, which are shown in shades of green on the map, each have a TMDL for phosphorus. And the Connecticut River Basin is part of a five-state Long Island Sound TMDL for nitrogen, which is shown in blue on the map. The black lines on the map show the 15 tactical planning basins in Vermont, 
The state uses a tactical basin planning process to identify sources of water quality issues and prioritize actions to address the identified issues to achieve and maintain watershed health. If you'd like to learn more about the tactical basin planning process, Rachel will add a link to the chat to a page on our website with more information. Working towards protecting and maintaining and restoring healthy waterways in Vermont requires work across all sectors. We track and report on clean water projects across the state, including projects on agricultural lands in or around rivers, lakes, and forest lands, which we call the natural resource sector, on developed lands and at wastewater treatment facilities. Within each of these broad land use categories, there's a huge variety of projects that are considered clean water projects. I'm going to provide just a few examples to help illustrate the types of work that we're talking about today. In the agricultural sector, there are dozens of field and production area practices that help to minimize runoff and treat phosphorus. Some examples are shown on the screen now. The picture on the left side of the screen is of an agricultural field in the Little Moyle River Basin that was planted with a cover crop to reduce erosion and field runoff through the winter season. Planting fields with a cover crop in the off season or between plantings helps to stabilize soils and reduce sediment and phosphorus runoff. The picture in the middle shows a grassland shallow slot manure injection equipment, which is a very shallow manure injection method that causes a low level of soil disturbance. This application method significantly reduces surface phosphorus application and nutrient loss while increasing efficiency and crop production. And on the right side of the screen shows a wood chip barnyard replacement project which is a cost-effective solution to reduce water quality impacts from heavy use areas. The work on this project included establishing a drainage layer overlain by wood chips. The drainage system underneath connects and divert, collects and diverts effluent into a collection system. The top layer of wood chips is replaced annually and can be composted and then field applied along with the collected effluent as a source of nutrients. The system provides controlled management of effluent that might otherwise run off into nearby waterways. All of these projects examples were funded through programs that are administered by the Agency of Agriculture, Farm and Markets. In the natural resource sector, there's also a wide variety of projects that can, can support clean water goals. On the left side of the screen shows a before and after picture of a dam removal that removed a 100 foot long concrete dam and reconnected 26 stream miles on the Bull Run, which is a tributary to the Dog River in Northfield, Vermont. Dam removals improve water quality by encouraging river channel to return to a natural equilibrium, which minimizes sedimentation caused by erosion and benefits species by allowing aquatic organisms to move freely up and down the river channel. In the middle two pictures, the top shows the before and the bottom shows the after of a half acre riparian buffer planting along the Green River in Guilford, Vermont. Plantings in the riparian corridor reduce sedimentation caused by channel erosion by providing bank stabilization and also increase shading and woody debris in the river, which can benefit the overall health of the ecosystem. In addition, riparian buffer plantings can also function to intercept sediment and phosphorus carried by runoff from the landscape before it reaches a waterway. The pictures on the right side of the screen show an example of a shoreline stabilization that addresses road erosion on Black Pond Road directly adjacent to Black Pond in Hubberton, Vermont. In this project, encapsulated soil lifts were installed between the roadway and the pond along the shoreline to stabilize the road material, limit erosion that was contributing large amounts of sediment to the water, and revegetate the area to provide long-term stability. Clean water projects in the developed lands sector are largely designed to capture and treat stormwater runoff. A couple of examples here on the left side of the screen shows a project installed to manage runoff from multiple roofs, impervious roads, sidewalks, and parking areas along a section of Route 30 in Pulteney, Vermont. 
This project included the installation of a drop inlet box filters and a fractured stone outfall that directs flow into an infiltration basin. The infiltration basin allows for sediment and pollutants to settle and infiltrate prior to the flow reaching two nearby streams. And on the right side of the screen shows the before and after of a remediated gully in, in Barrie, Vermont, where severe erosion had become a significant contributor to sediment and phosphorus in the Stevens branch. The gully was stabilized and a sand infiltration practice was installed along with an armored step pool system to slow water flow and allow sediment and associated phosphorus to infiltrate before draining to the river. These are just a few examples to illustrate what clean water work can look like, but there are many other types of projects that also contribute towards the state's progress in meeting our water quality goals. Each year, we compile the Vermont Clean Water Initiative Annual Performance Report to summarize all of the clean water projects that are underway and projects that have been completed. We report on how state investments have been put to work, what outcomes have been achieved, and where we stand in relation to water quality targets outlined in the large-scale water quality plans for the Lake Champlain and Lake Memphremagog basins. The report is submitted to the Vermont State Legislature and the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, to meet both state statutory and federal reporting requirements. Each year, the EPA assesses progress and issues determinations, which are called report cards, as part of the TMDL accountability framework. You can access this year's report as well as reports from previous years on our website. Rachel will add a link to that page in the chat. The performance report is a tool that we use to provide accountability and transparency to the public, the legislature, and EPA on how the state is allocating money, but how do we track our progress? We use the following measures throughout the report to show progress being made. Investment measures show how the state is investing in clean water projects. Education and outreach measures demonstrate public awareness and engagement in implementing clean water priorities. Project output measures help us quantify the results of clean water project work. And pollutant reduction measures are modeled estimates of phosphorus reductions achieved at the individual clean water project level. We also track project cost effectiveness, which shows us the amount of money spent per unit of phosphorus reduced and helps to inform future project prioritization by identifying efficient areas for future investment. And we're currently assessing opportunities to track and account for project co-benefits. We know that projects designed with a primary goal of achieving of improving water quality can also generate other benefits, including flood resilience, climate change mitigation, improved wildlife habitat conditions, workforce development, enhanced recreational opportunities, and support for local economies through tourism and property values. So we want to be able to highlight all of those great, great results we're achieving as well. So now getting into the data, we'll start with state investments. The graph on the screen shows Vermont state investments in clean water work since state fiscal year 2016. All of the results that I present today will be shown from state fiscal year 2016 through 2022. We start in state fiscal year 2016 because that was the year that Act 64, which is Vermont's Clean Water Act, went into effect, which established clean water priorities and funding mechanisms, as well as reporting requirements. State funding for clean water work is primarily allocated through the Clean Water Board and budget process. You can learn more about the budget process on our website. Rachel will also include a link to that page in the chat. Over the past seven years, the state of Vermont has invested nearly $337 million in clean water work with investments spanning across sectors. This includes project construction and implementation, which accounts for over 80% of state investments, but funding also goes to support other important stages of clean water work, including project planning and assessment, design and engineering, and monitoring. The funding figure here on the screen shows only the state dollars and does not include the nearly $225 million over the same period of leveraged funds from federal and local sources that were directed to supporting clean water work across the state. 
Moving on to our education and outreach measure. Education and outreach to a variety of audiences is an important component of clean water work. We can further our progress towards reaching clean water goals by providing opportunities for the public to learn about and engage in clean water work, as well as get assess assistance with technical aspects of project design and implementation. Many of the clean water projects that the state funds are non-regulatory and rely on the willingness of private landowners to have clean water projects installed on their property. So it's important that the public has access to venues to learn about opportunities and understand how they can contribute. Education and outreach events also provide an opportunity for partners in the field doing clean water work to learn from each other and support the collective growth in our capacity. Since state fiscal year 2016, the state has supported over 2,800 outreach events with a total of more than 86,000 attendees. Not only do education and outreach events provide opportunities tailored to a wide range of audiences, state funding is also distributed to support partner groups such as regional planning commissions, agricultural associations, natural resource conservation districts, and watershed groups in hosting these events to reach their partners and their specific audiences. Now on to project outputs, which are measures that help us quantify the impact of our clean water investments. The table on the screen shows just a few of the results of clean water investments over the past seven years. We track a pretty large number of project output measures, so this table is only highlighting a couple from each sector. The numbers in the table include outputs achieved statewide, not just those that were supported by state funding. We are fortunate to have reporting partners that contribute data on clean water work that is supported by federal funding sources, such as the US Department of Agriculture's Natural Resource Conservation Service and the Lake Champlain Basin Program. We also track and report on clean water project outputs that are a result of project implementation to comply with state regulatory programs, which may be but are not always supported by state funding sources. And our last uh, measure here on phosphorus reductions. We estimate phosphorus reductions for both the Lake Champlain and Lake Memphremagog basins in order to be able to assess our progress towards the, the phosphorus TMDLs. So beginning with the Lake Champlain basin, the Lake Champlain TMDL has a 20 year implementation period and implementation began in 2016. The map on the left side of the screen shows the EPA accountability framework schedule for the first five year cycle of the 20 year TMDL implementation period. EPA assesses progress on a rotating basis by basin. So each sub basin within the Lake Champlain basin has a tactical basin plan, which is developed and outlines implementation efforts and targets. The five-year tactical basin plans include an implementation table that identifies the priorities and specific strategies of practices to be implemented. After about 2.5 years, an interim report is provided back to EPA, and after the five years of the tactical basin plan, a final report is prepared to submit to EPA. Interim and final reports are included in the annual Clean Water Initiative Performance Report. This year's reports report included the Otter Creek Interim Report and the South, South Lake Champlain Final Report. Each year, EPA reviews these reports and issues report cards. We don't have the determinations for this year yet, but so far to date, EPA report cards have found the state's progress to be satisfactory. The graph on the right side of the screen shows estimated phosphorus load reductions achieved in relation to the Lake Champlain TMDL. The Lake Champlain TMDL baseline period from 2001 to 2010 determined that to achieve water quality targets, annual phosphorus loading to the lake needs to be reduced by about 212 metric tons per year by the end of calendar year 2036. As of state fiscal year 2022, we estimate we are about 19% of the way to that goal with just under 40 metric tons reduced this past year. As you can see, the goal is not to eliminate phosphorus from the system entirely as the nutrient plays an important ecological role, 
but rather to return to a balanced level of nutrient concentration that the ecosystem can sustain. In the Lake Champlain Basin, we also track progress by lake segment, and different lake segments have different reduction targets and are at different points along the way towards reaching those targets. Progress made by lake segment varies for a couple of different reasons. In some areas, there has been a focus that, that, um, that has received targeted investment and really progressed the phosphorus reduction that has been achieved. Some lake segments have more phosphorus loading present and thus higher targets, meaning they have relatively more work to do in order to reach their reduction goals. And finally, we anticipate that this picture may change in the future as we work on implementing expanded accounting methods that will help us to generate a more representative estimate of phosphorus reductions achieved across all sectors. Moving on to the Lake Memphremagog Basin, which is also covered by a TMDL for phosphorus. The map on the right side of the screen shows the Memphremagog watershed, which you can see is smaller than the Lake Champlain watershed, but still represents a pretty large area of the state. The Lake Memphremagog TMDL estimates that annual phosphorus loading needs to be reduced by about 33,500 pounds per year, which is equivalent to 15.2 metric tons by the end of calendar year 2037 in order to achieve desired water quality conditions. And we estimate that as of state fiscal year 2022, we're about 13% of the way to that goal with just under two metric tons reduced this past year. Like in the Lake Champlain Basin, the goal here is not to eliminate phosphorus entirely, but to reduce and regain balance in ecosystem function. Okay, the last graph I have here, thanks for sticking with me this long. Um, the graphs on the screen here put the progress that we've made towards TMDL targets in the context of where we need to go to meet the water quality goals within the TMDL timeframes. The dark blue bars on the chart show estimated total annual phosphorus load reductions to date, and the hash marked bars extending into the future beyond 2022 show anticipated phosphorus reductions from projects that have already been implemented. Some clean water projects function for many years, so projects that have been implemented may have uh, an achieved phosphorus reduction into the future. That's what's shown by those um, hashed bars on the charts. The yellow dashed line on each chart shows the annual trend in phosphorus reduction from 2016 to 2022. And the green dashed line shows, shows the trend line we should be aiming for in order to meet the TMDL redu reduction targets within the allotted timeframes. In both watersheds, the pace of phosphorus reduction will need to incre increase in order to achieve our water qu quality goals. However, we have several reasons to be optimistic that our collective ability to reach or exceed these projected trends. Firstly, We've spent the last several years establishing some foundational programmatic pieces, which are now in place, and we can move beyond the uh, ramping up period um, towards increased um, project implementation. And secondly, we're shifting to a regionalized approach for funding administration, which we anticipate will reduce bottlenecks and get more clean water projects on the ground. And lastly, we're in the process of expanding the accounting methods that allow us to estimate phosphorus reductions. In the past, some, some clean water projects that um, we, we have not previously been able to account for phosphorus reduction associated with some clean water project types. We now have the data requirements and methods in place to capture that progress going forward. The Clean Water Interactive Dashboard is a publicly accessible platform to view the data that is behind all of our reporting. The Clean Water Initiative Performance Report summarizes data at the state scale or by large scale TMDL area. In the Interactive Dashboard, you can view data at a finer spatial scale or by specific areas of interest. The Clean Water Interactive Dashboard presents investment data and project output data at the county and the basin scale, 
and also provides estimated total annual phosphorus reduction data that can be filtered by sector and by funding source. And this report also allows users to view project level cost effectiveness, which again is the dollars spent per kilogram of phosphorus reduced. So the interactive platform allows, allows for refined data views. I'll just provide a quick little demo, but I encourage you all to visit the link that's been added to the chat to um, view the Clean Water Interactive dashboard and follow along if you'd like. The Clean Water Interactive dashboard is available on our Clean Water portal. So um, by visiting this link, I'll provide an example of the report on clean water investments by Basin and just demonstrate a couple of the features of this report. The graph here shows investments, investment data, and the table underneath the graph shows the same data as is presented in the graph, just in a numeric form, if that's a more accessible way to view the data. You can filter this data by land use sector by clicking on any of these land use categories. You can also select specific funding sources that you'd like to view data on if you want to see um, just state funding or all funding. Let's see if I can, here we go. Oh, I could just filter by state data to see what level of investments have been made from that funding source. And you can also filter the data by region. So this map shows the tactical planning basins. You could select a single tactical planning basin or more than one by, by using the control key on your keyboard to select multiple. And lastly, you can filter by large scale drainage area if you'd like to see the investments made across the entire Lake Champlain Basin, for example, or all of the investments made in the Connecticut River drainage. So I encourage all of you to visit the Clean Water Interactive Dashboard if this is of interest and, um, and interact with the data. To wrap up, the state has made substantial investments that have resulted in really great progress towards meeting our water quality targets. In the coming years, we anticipate an influx of funding to support clean water work as a result of federal initiatives under the, clean, the American Rescue Plan Act and bipartisan infrastructure law, as well as through state funding and the Clean Water Fund. We have the foundational building blocks in place, including establishment of funding mechanisms, expansion of regulatory programs, and development of technical assistance networks that will enable partners statewide to access the resources necessary to implement projects that benefit water quality. And while we've made a lot of progress so far, we'll need to continue our collective work through sustained effort, investment, coordination, and capacity development in order to reach our water quality goals. Preparation of this report would not be possible without the help of our many reporting partners. So I'd like to thank everyone that's been involved in the data collection and reporting process. And would also like to give a special thanks to the Agency of Digital Services for their support in database development and data management that helped us to prepare this report. My contact information is on the screen. Feel free to reach out with feedback or questions. And now I'd be happy to answer some questions that came up during the presentation. There are a couple questions in the chat. All right. So um, the first one is, does the report factor in A, expenditures not using state money by MS4s to reduce phosphorus? Um, and then B, the second part of the question, um, expenditures by towns using non-state funds to help upgrade an REI segment to meet MRGP standards? Great question. So um, right now our reporting on investments is representative of state funding and a couple of federal funding sources. We do not um, 
collect data on municipal expenditures towards MS4 phosphorus reduction projects or um, MRGP work um, right now um, because we anticipate that that could represent a pretty large burden on some municipalities in order to be responsive to that data request. So it's not something that we've captured thus far, but um, you know, could be considered in the future. Any other questions, feel free to raise your hand and we can call on you or you can put it in the chat if you're more comfortable. And maybe just to follow up on Claire's answer to that question. Hi, my name is Emily Bird. I work with Claire in the Clean Water Initiative program. Um, the performance report does capture data on leveraging, so where municipalities are providing local match or in kind that's reported hand in hand with a state grant or contract and also clean water state revolving fund loans that ultimately primarily get repaid. Uh, those contributions are captured in the report. Um, it's just a matter of not having the data stream and reporting mechanisms in place uh, in a consistent framework for municipal investment data to be captured. Uh, but we do acknowledge that there are substantial investments that are happening and uh, really appreciate the the local contributions to our collective water quality goals. And, and I'm not trying to throw my towns under the bus, but <laughs> with, a, with a workload requirement, but you know, I'm, I'm, I mean, they, they do a report every April where they're summarizing their MS4 activity. And I know they're documenting like the street sweeping, right? And then as they're implementing the phosphorus control plan that would probably be the primary tracking mechanism right because they would do an annual report on okay yeah so the phos the estimated phosphorus reductions associated with projects that the ms4s are implementing towards their phosphorus control plan are included in our estimated phosphorus reduction metrics um, but just to date we haven't captured um, the the costs necessarily that the those projects are um costing the towns okay and then, and then I'll, yeah no that does and then for the mrgp which applies to you know the whole state i mean i know it, it may not have the financial data and that might be a hassle to bug towns about it but if you're if they're reporting in the portal you, you are capturing the phosphorus reduction benefit of a road segment upgraded by what any source of funding right okay yeah and i assumed i assumed as much since it's all going into the same portal so yeah and a similar question came up recently dan so that's why we have some responses for you but i also learned that the stormwater program when they facilitate the reporting from the ms4 communities there is a field where they can provide cost data but it's on a voluntary basis it's not a required yeah. field so there, that it, it it may be possible to capture some of those data but probably not in a consistent um manner that would really reflect the full lift of that investment across the board right okay all right thanks appreciate it Another question that was in the chat was um, what happens in 2036, 2037, 2037 if we don't meet the, the target? That's a really good question, and I have to be honest, I'm not sure that I know the answer, so I'm going to see if Emily Bird might be able to help out with that. Yeah, um, I guess I would turn to the accountability framework in the Lake Champlain TMDL. We have taken an adaptive management approach with this whole effort where each increment in time when we go through a report card cycle um, and a reporting cycle, we look at 
what did we accomplish and where are there remaining gaps? And that is that kind of analysis is informing what our focus is for the next two and a half year, five year incremental time frame. And so that is unchartered territory for us. And I think um, we're keeping an eye on our trajectory toward that end goal. It may mean that we need to look at some additional programmatic elements that need to be put into place to accelerate our progress, or it may mean that there's other variables outside of our control that are affecting um, how the lake is responding to the phosphorus reductions, and we need to reassess um, the timeline we're operating under and other um, tools at our disposal, like how we prioritize funding, what kind of regulatory uh, mechanisms are in place, and and also just making sure we have enough time to respond to some of these external variables. So it's a really good question, Dan. I don't have um, a crystal ball, and I I think there's reason to be hopeful that we will get to that end goal, uh, but we will need to take it one step at a time and continue to reevaluate our progress and where we focus our efforts on that sort of adaptive cyclical approach. All right. Um, if there are no further questions, we could wrap. We could wrap up. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming to our conversation, and I hope to see you at the next one. Thanks all. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Claire and Rachel. Nice presentation. Have a great day, everyone.